Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's December 1st, 2018, and you are watching the Theo Trade Weekend Update. Let's begin right off the bat. The bear is far from done. Now, given the fact that the S&Ps just rallied 127 points, I think that's a fairly bold statement to make right off the bat. But I'm going to give you a little bit of reasoning here as to why we actually take that very okay, large opinion inside of this marketplace moving forward. Let's make a couple of points right up front, and then we'll talk about, again, specifically, you know, again, why the bear is not done and really some of the opportunities that may lie in front of us. Now, warning! opinions are coming over here and you know i receive a lot of emails and that's that's what people want they want opinions in the marketplace and that's exactly what i'm going to give you on this video with some uh, fairly again strong reasoning behind it uh number one that i want to kick off with here in terms of the points we have a massive binary event going on this weekend all right if you've been hiding under a rock somewhere what i'm talking about is the g20 summit Obviously, the United States is going to meet with China, yada, yada, yada. Maybe they come out with deal, maybe they don't. But let me give you a little bit of, uh, I guess, opinion again on this particular subject. First of all, when it comes to China versus the U.S., I think most of the upside is already priced into the market. But again, I want to get very, very detailed of what I would expect in this marketplace. All right. So again, this weekend, the administration is meeting with China, okay, down in Argentina. It's a party. What are they going to come out with? Now, that's strictly an opinion, but I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters at all. First of all, I think the marketplace this past week, so as I said, we had a 127-point rally. The marketplace this past week, if you were short and you were looking forward to this, this you know, G20 summit, you're like, wait, nothing bad can really come out of it. They're going to talk. Okay, even if a deal is not done, I believe that there's going to be positive attributes that are going to be released in the media. And I think a lot of shorts probably recognize this and covered, forced the market up, and then we exploded higher once we got above the SPX expected move, which I'll talk about here in just a moment. So out of the G20, what do I expect? Positive comments. That's it. Whether a deal is done here or there, it does not matter. What I would really anticipate out of the marketplace I think on, on Monday, first of all, you have to be aware, on Monday, we have a $47 expected move inside of the SPX. That's big. I mean, there's a lot of weeks, okay? Many, many weeks. In fact, tons of weeks this year that we didn't have a $47 expected move for what? For the entire week, right? Between now and, and when I say now, all right, so it's a, it's a Saturday morning. Obviously, you're not trading on a Saturday morning. But uh, again, markets are going to reopen. The futures are going to reopen on uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, between then and basically the expiration, of course, on Monday, we're expecting a $47 move inside of the SPX. Okay? It's big. Keep that in mind. So that's what I mean by kind of a binary event. And you guys, listen, if you've never heard the term binary event, you're either going what? Up or down, you know, about 50, 50 points inside of the S&P. So again, expect uh, markets to rock. Now, what I specifically expect out of this, I think the first move is actually going to be to the upside. All right, so positive comments come out. Uh, then again, you do have Peter Navarro there, which, you know, uh, a barroom brawl could, of course, break out. Besides the point, if, you, um, if you're thinking about this, though, it makes sense to see the first reaction to the upside, uh, followed by some strong sell-side activity. Now, uh, again, that sell-side activity, it may not grip hold till later in the week. So you have to be careful right now to the upside. Nevertheless, okay, as this week progresses, and this, this coming week, I would expect, again, some, uh, some sell side activity to start to grip hold in the marketplace, a little bit of return to uh, reality, if you will, in what has become now uh, really this kind of rolling bear market. So in this binary event in the G20, regardless of what is said, again, I believe there's going to be some positive comments, uh, followed by, again, big burst to the upside and then some sell side activity. You're going to get some wild two-way trade, which for those of you that trade on an intraday basis, even like on Sunday night, you might get some pretty good action inside of the S&P futures, even the NASDAQ futures off that move. All right, number two point, the SPX. Let's get to the SPX because I talk Okay, incessantly about the expected move. The expected move last week, and this is really, really important. So last week, we had about a $62 expected move. What did we 
actually move? Well, we moved over 120, again, over 120 uh, S&P points. So effectively what it means, we moved two times okay, the deviation. I mean, literally right to the edge of two times the deviation, almost into three deviation type territory, which is what? You know, it's Mr. Toad's wild ride. So the reason that I say, you know, the bear is far from done, okay? You are seeing volatility right now. You're like, yes, but we moved up, Don. Okay, that's still part of volatility. You know, how many moves this past week did we see in excess of 1% in the S&Ps? I mean, each and every day. Sure, we closed at the end of the day, unchanged a few of the days, but nevertheless, Okay, some wild like 2% plus moves. Again, this is just a hallmark move, explosion to the upside. It's actually what we term, okay, rip your face off rally. That's what we just saw this past week. In fact, last weekend on the video, I even warned of some of the tech stocks that were like hideously oversold and they haven't had that rip your face off rally. So listen, this is par for the volatility course. Just because we're rallying, you know, what? Oh, it's a week of a rally. You know, you can't get off your game and you should expect, again, some hideous sell side activity, you know, coming to a theater near you, you know, probably towards mid to late week. Uh, if not, believe me, as you start to, uh, you know, embark upon December, you're going to see some more sell side activity in the marketplace. All right, moving forward. So we know that we blew through the expected move in, in this previous week. The week previous to that, we also blew through the expected move, which, again, is a hallmark of a marketplace that's displaying inefficiency. Two weeks in a row, we blow through the expected move. What is the expected move in this coming week? So again, we just moved 127 points. We have this massive what? This massive you know binary event coming. And still, this next week, the expected move, it's what? Eh, it's about 69 bucks. That's actually not that much given the fact that we just moved 127, you know, the week you know, before that we moved $100 in the S&Ps. Again, as I said, this is Mr. Toad's wild ride. And and yet because we rallied for what? A few trading sessions, everybody goes, "All right, take off your bear hats and and put on the rally cap right now." I think it's a little too early uh, for that. You know, comments out of the Fed, nothing changed in the Fed. The Fed uses, okay? changes in their commentary to actually stave off traders. Just think about that one for a moment and we'll actually show that here in just a minute inside of the bonds. The bonds are completely and totally confused. That's precisely the way the Fed wants it. Why? Because if traders get ahead of the marketplace, then you got big trouble. If everybody knows interest rates are gonna go up, they actually step on the accelerator and trade ahead of it. Right now, what do we have? Okay, you're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place in understanding what the Fed is doing, which is precisely, again, the way we believe that they're gonna want it. Number three, opportunity. There's opportunities all over in this marketplace. One of those specifically is we're gonna talk about healthcare here momentarily in the entire healthcare sector, which we have now stepped into in a short position. With that, let's get right to it. Let's look at a couple of charts, a couple of positions, and uh, get down to it. All right, so now we're gonna look at some charts and a couple of trades involving, uh, first of all, this, this binary event that we are faced with this weekend. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and start there and let's get uh, really down specific. First of all, I'm bringing up a chart here on the spiders and something I've been talking about extensively, whether it's on the weekend videos on a, you know, during the, uh, and throughout the week is that we're, well, effectively boxed in right now with a degree of volatility. And that's why I'm saying like, just to see this, this pop to the upside, everybody, again, they're like, that's it. We're bullish again. And wait a second. Didn't we just do this a few weeks ago? And again, there's like this incredible short term memory. Everybody becomes like a fly when it comes to volatility. And I don't want to get too deep into the psychology of this, but volatility. Okay. And I've mentioned this just in numerous times. Volatility makes traders feel that everything they're doing is it precisely the wrong time. So you couldn't be any more wrong. And if you feel that way, then that's what volatility feels like. So you kind of have to sit back a little bit and you have to take a couple of positions. What can you do? Well, you know, sometimes you can sell some premium. Sometimes you can take what we term duration positions. You can use some in-out spreads. You got to get back. You got to get hedged. You can't take crazy amounts of risk, but at the same time, you don't need to take crazy amounts of risk. Why? Because we're just moving more. So we see this rip and rally. And as I was saying, 
okay, a moment ago is we're effectively kind of boxed in. Now, when you're boxed in like this, you have really, really difficult decisions to make. And it's because you have allocations on and you started allocating capital back here. You've allocated capital here. You've allocated capital here. And we've now passed through literally, this is two months, right? All this volatility kind of kicked off in early October. Here we are in the very beginning of December. So you're heavily allocated in this standard deviation. So right now you're thinking mm, we might pop to the upside or you can look at this pop to the upside okay, as an opportunity to step in and short again. That's effectively what I am doing at this point. And I think that the, uh, again, there's the G20 that's going to come out and it may actually lift us just a little bit further to give us more opportunity to get short. Um, again, I will bring a couple of those short candidates to your attention as we kind of uh, move forward. I don't want to mention too much more about the G20. Again, I kind of gave, you know, the, the background behind that. Uh, you know, what do you expect? They're going to have positive comments that are coming out of here. Again, unless, of course, Peter Navarro tries to, uh, you know, jump over the table at somebody. But again, different story entirely. But with this, so some positive comments come out. But again, I think it's all baked in already. Uh, this is shorts covering. This is, you know, explosion to the upside. Now let's take it over to the SPX. Now the SPX really has been, it's been wild in terms of the expected moves and a lot can be learned about this. And listen, I know there's, you know, there's a lot of hash marks, a lot of lines in your screen. Let me just zoom in for a moment. Okay. I'm going to zoom in. This is the, the last two weeks. So the last two weeks, first of all, Okay. We're just two weeks removed from hideous sell side activity to the downside. This is where we're like, oh no, we're going to break the lows from October. <laughs> Here we are a week later. We're like, oh, we're back, baby. Okay. And again, that's kind of rip your, you know, rip your face off rally. So we ripped through the bottom of the expected move. We ripped through the top of the expected move. Okay. If you look back just a little bit before that, I'm going to zoom out for a second and zoom back in. Okay. We actually have a breach here, a breach here, okay? And these are breaches of the expected move at the end of a given week. So what you're actually seeing right now, as I said, these are all kind of hallmarks of inefficiency in a marketplace. When I say it's inefficient, the marketplace is having a difficult time handicapping risk. That's what it comes down to, okay? Because if it was good at handicapping risk, you know, the marketplace wouldn't have exceeded, okay, what it thought it was going to do. And I, I have to reiterate this one with some specifics. What I'm saying, okay, is, is again, this next week of trade, this next week of trade, what are we anticipating? Well, look, just go out to December 7th, so Pearl Harbor Day, and you're going to see that there's a $69 expected move. As I said, almost a 40, $47, dollars expected move just for what? For, you know, Monday. That's a big Monday. So about a $70 expected move. And I just want to elaborate upon this for a second. So what we're saying is the marketplace, it's expecting a $70 move up or a $70 move lower based on the option premium. Well, clearly this is, you know, okay, 70 bucks is a pretty big move up or down. Yeah, but it got breached here. It got breached here. It got breached here. It got breached here. What is that saying? Okay. First of all, what it tells me in the short duration, don't you dare sell options. Because you can get to get run over. Again, there's always people out there like, you got, you must always sell options. You want to sell options when you just saw the last two weeks get absolutely smoked? Okay. You sell options for a couple of bucks out of the money. And all of a sudden, you're going to take what? Oh, you know, $60, $70 hit. So in the S&Ps right now and in the index products, doesn't look good to be able to sell options. And that's why I spend some time on that because again, people have tendency to just go out and they're like, oh, I'm gonna blindly sell this thing because it's always about selling premium. Guess what? It's not. Because in the last two weeks, if you bought premium, you actually made what? A ton of money over there. So, all right, let's move on. We're through it. It's a binary event. It's the G20. Now, let me get down to the details of, of exactly what I would expect. And for this, Okay. For this, I'm actually going to bring up the S&P E minis. All right. So very, very specific here. Okay. I actually think, and again, this is purely opinion. I think the first move is actually going to be burst to the upside, followed by some uh, sell side activity. Now, okay. What do we have for targets to the downside? Obviously probably stop along the way, maybe at uh, 2731. Okay. Could even come down to 2682. It's very difficult though, for me to be able to discern how long this rip and rally is going to last. Okay. Or better yet, I have no idea when you're going to be able to step in and actually short. So you're going to have to come in. Okay. With very limited allocations to that. 
uh, again, we've already like, kind of hyperextended a rip your face off rally. Let's say things get really crazy. Are we actually going to come all the way back up to 28.11? I don't think so. All right. I mean, once, twice, maybe third time's the charm. I don't think so. And again, it's going to be next to impossible to discern when to, when do I step in over here and possibly take a little bit of a short position? That doesn't have to be done on Sunday night. Okay. Some of this rally may carry through into Monday, even Tuesday. Uh, nevertheless, okay, I think this is, again, you know, uh, just some buy side activity where everybody gets caught up in it and they're like, this, this rally is going to be real. Could it be extreme? Could we get above 2811? Absolutely. Okay. In fact, if you look at the expected move, and this, I think it's pretty important. You look at the expected move just between like, you know, here, this is where the S and P's and this, this 2811. Okay. You have to recognize the expected move is 47 bucks just for Monday. Guess what? That covers that gap. So we're priced to move into the 2811. Okay. But again, I don't think we get there and we're actually going to uh, tank from, from that point on. Um, now, could we be totally wrong in the comments from G20? Sure. Maybe they get in a, you know, a hideous fight and Peter Navarro again does jump over the table and we just take some hideous sell side activity. Nevertheless, I think the marketplace has already made up its mind in this case. Okay, rally and then fade. All right, moving on over here. So the SPX, again, as we just displayed, blew through the expected moves. And again, I want to reiterate, I do not want to be a premium seller in the near term. Let's actually cruise over for a second and talk a little bit about bonds. Bonds, they're totally and completely confusing. <laughs> That's a, to put it lightly, in fact, when you're looking at bonds, you're looking at futures, go over here to futures, adjust for contract changes, hit apply, hit OK. It's the most effective way. So the interest rates, are they going up or are they going down? Well, right now the Fed has got you like, you know, what? We're only like a month removed from some of the comments out of the Fed that goes, we're far from neutral. OK, what's what's neutral? I'm not telling you, but we're far from neutral. Then the comments obviously this week is hey, we're a little closer to neutral. So what does the market do? Well, they bought the bonds, okay? If they're buying bonds, that's taking the interest rates lower, okay? In fact, we can even look at the interest rates. If you don't mind, it's worth a, uh, a momentary deviation over here to take a look at the rates. Cruise over to the TNX. What is the TNX? This is actually the 10-year. So are interest rates going up or interest rates going down? They're right now going down, and they have been for the entire month of November, okay? Don't look at this necessarily as a positive. The marketplace may already be pricing in a slowdown in the economy. Okay, the marketplace may actually be saying, "Eh, we've gone too far." Now, I want you to recognize something big about this. Bond market is very, very smart. The bond market, okay, didn't wait for the comments, okay, in any way, shape, or form. They didn't wait for the comments from Jerome Powell. They've actually been what? They've been taking interest rates down now for the better part of an entire month. And that's the point. Like, as I said, with the G20, the market already knows what it's going to do. OK, in this particular case, the market already knew like, hey, maybe the Fed's getting a, you know, a little, a little over the skis right now. Let's take rates down a little bit. OK, however, I wouldn't expect this to uh, to last all that uh, that long. So as bonds have uh, rallied back to the upside, you actually can feel, if you will, confusion to a degree in the marketplace. And that doesn't necessarily bode well for the uh, for the broader S&Ps. Uh, by the way, speaking of the bonds, I am not at this point in time taking a position of the bonds. Uh, I, I actually, I'm looking at this and you know, there could be some more upside in this bond market before it reverses again. I'll look for an opportunity to get short the bonds, but you got to recognize that's a really, really crowded trade. There are so many people that want to be short bonds because they know interest rates are going to go up. When everybody is on one side of the trade, we usually move counter to that, which makes a lot of sense because if everybody's short, okay, First person covers, and then we start to rally, and the next person covers, and we start to rally, and next thing you know, okay, we're up from what, 136 to 140. That's a big, big boy move inside of the bonds. So again, I'm not necessarily positioning myself into the bonds right now, which actually leads me to the uh, to the opportunity. And this is something I've been talking about almost at nauseum, but uh, healthcare. So uh, an opportunity in this weekend video is healthcare and the healthcare sector, okay? First of all, Aetna is off the table because Aetna is involved in a uh, kind of a wild deal with, with CVS. I wouldn't even look at it. Uh, United Healthcare Group. United Healthcare has had an explosive move to the upside. Okay, 
what we've actually done is we've now stepped in and we're using an in out spread here. Okay. I'm just buying like one strike in the money. Okay. Selling a strike out of the money in out spread would look something along the lines of this. Now I would never pay more than about a dollar 25 for $2 and 50 cent wide spread. But again, we're putting on just a little bit of a bearish take inside of United healthcare. This is only for the next what 30 some odd days. Okay. That is for those of you that do not want to have, you know, really heavy amounts of capital extended into a bit of a bearish position. Why healthcare? Okay. Unscathed. It's being used, okay, as a risk mitigation tactic. Now, the point of, of United Healthcare Group that's fairly amazing is that when the marketplace was selling off, they weren't selling off United Healthcare, but when the marketplace rallied, they did rally United Healthcare. Okay. Why United Healthcare? Because the object of my affection has been heavily into Boeing, okay? But if the Dow is going to come down, the Dow is going to come down on Boeing and United Healthcare, both positions I kind of want to build a short in. Now, United Healthcare is also a constituent of the XLV, which is an ETF that effectively is none other than, well, here, take a look. It's healthcare. So it's healthcare. Have I built a position in here? Yes, this is a vastly different position. This is what we call a duration, again, a duration short position. What that effectively says, and again, we're right here, pretty much, you know, you can open up as much time as you want, all time high, okay? Look at that chart. Is that not spectacular? To me, this is just a, a Fed-fueled fantasy chart, which is uh, quantitative easing at its greatest. Let's just pump money into it, okay? Call it Obamacare, call it the Fed, call it whatever you want. Uh, that, people, is an opportunity. Now, I'm stepping in the way of an absolute hideous freight train to the upside, but I'm using a duration position and I want to reiterate a stance over here. The duration position, it doesn't mean, okay, that I want to build a short until January. It means a minimum, again, a minimum of three months of a time horizon. So one of the things that you'll see me doing a lot of lately is that I'm actually shifting the time frame that I trade because the markets are becoming, you know, hideously volatile. I've actually gone ahead and I've actually shifted my time frame a little bit longer. So you got to be able to sustain these positions. And in the case of XLV, I'm just buying a deep in the money put as a synthetic short stock replacement. Last but definitely not least, let's go take a look at the financials. Why the financials? Because I've mentioned this just absolute marquee level of 2650 inside of the financials. The financials chopped out all over the place. But the reason, again, that I am bringing up the financials in kind of this weekend update is you better be keyed into them. Throughout the course of this week, they effectively have like the highest volatility. They have a 25%. I mean, this is like a VIX for just the XLF, right? It's a VIX for the financials. A 75 cent move, okay? In a 25% volatility. Now, how does that compare to, for example, technology? Like, why not? Let's compare it to technology. Technology is up there as well. But it, when you get really, really sector specific over here, I just cannot reiterate enough. The financials are what are going to drive those S&Ps. Okay. Throughout the course of the week, keep eyes on them. Again, the NASDAQ it's all lit up in terms of volatility. The financials all lit up in terms of volatility. That's where our focus needs to be in this coming week of trade. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.